And now for the magic moment, we're gonna go ahead and test the hot water heater. I'm trying with a small gas tank, we'll see if that works. Um, we may end up having to put a full-size gas tank on, but at this point, I'm just going to try with a small gas tank and let's see if this works. First things first, we have to put in batteries. And if I'm not mistaken, these are size D batteries. So we're gonna go ahead and put in two size D batteries. Now, if I'm not mistaken, it's going to go this direction. So what it looks like. Should have a connection there. Now we'll go ahead and connect up a little propane tank. We're actually going to try with one of these camping tanks. Hopefully it has enough pressure because if so it'll make life a lot easier and not have to worry about a big tank considering the hot water heater really is only going to be used very very seldomly. And for this have a special unit that is designed to be able to work with a basically to go from a regular valve to a small gas tank there. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the side in first. You always put the side into your regulator first and only after you put your gas tank on. So now we're gonna go ahead and install the gas tank. We now have gas inside there. If this works, I'll create a little cradle to hold the gas tank in place. That would, work, that would be fantastic. Okay, here comes the fun part, trying to figure out how this works. We're gonna go to summer, winter, summer, let's try on winter, and theoretically, as soon as I stop running hot water, it should start clicking. And we have hot water! Yes! We have mice and hot water. This is fantastic. It works perfectly. I am a very, very happy person. We're good to go. Excellent. The flu is not getting hot yet. Well, we really haven't used it much. So just to make sure things are safe, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the propane tank. Because I don't want to leave that connected for nothing. So we just unscrew. Making sure we're unscrewing the brass connector, not the main nut. We are now good to go. Okay. One last quick just check up of what's going on in here. Right now, we're still trying to figure out spacing for the uh, the drip coffee brewing machine. Um, it's a small but very efficient espresso machine. This here is the grinder for the drip coffee machine. It's not going to be a good grinder. For espresso then I'm gonna to have to get a totally separate grinder but this theoretically is going to go ahead and fit right over here close to the edge the way I can still open up get in between the light bulbs I can still open up and put my coffee inside even though we're pretty close to the edge and this is where I'm going to actually end up strapping this down and uh, that's it. I need to be able to get shorter legs for the Curtis Brewer. That way it'll fit underneath the wood soffit that I put in. As you can see right now, it's a little bit too close to the wood soffit for comfort. So I need to be able to get shorter legs. I've got these as low as they'll go. I need to either buy shorter legs or make shorter legs. Either one is fine. 
and um, that way I can slide that in all the way to the back and uh, that's it thank you guys everybody for watching and I'll keep you updated as you go on